May 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Samuel chapters 23 and 24 from the Old Testament. These are the final words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man raised up as the ruler chosen by the God of Jacob, Israel's beloved singer of songs. The Lord's Spirit spoke through me, his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The protector of Israel spoke to me. The one who rules fairly among men. The one who rules in the fear of God. Is like the light of morning when the sun comes up. A morning in which there are no clouds. He is like the brightness after rain that produces grass from the earth. My dynasty is approved by God. For he has made a perpetual covenant with me arranged in all its particulars, and secured. He always delivers me and brings all I desire to fruition. But evil people are like thorns. All of them are tossed away, for they cannot be held in the hand. The one who touches them must use an iron instrument or the wooden shaft of a spear. They are completely burned up right where they lie. These are the names of David's warriors. Josheb Basabeth, a Tekemanite, was head of the officers. He killed 800 men with his spear in one battle. Next in command was Eliezer, son of Dodo, the son of Ahohai. He was one of the three warriors who were with David when they defied the Philistines, who were assembled there for battle. When the men of Israel retreated, he stood his ground and fought the Philistines until his hand grew tired that it seemed stuck to his sword. The Lord gave a great victory on that day. When the army returned to him, the only thing left to do was to plunder the corpses. Next in command was Shammah, son of Egai, the Hararite. When the Philistines assembled at Lehi, where there happened to be an area of a field that was full of lentils, the army retreated before the Philistines. But he made a stand in the middle of that area. He defended it and defeated the Philistines. The Lord gave them a great victory. At the time of the harvest, three of the thirty leaders went down to David at the cave of Adullam. A band of Philistines was camped in the valley of Rephaim. David was in the stronghold at the time, while a Philistine garrison was in Bethlehem. David was thirsty and said, how I wish someone would give me some water to drink from the cistern in Bethlehem near the gate. So the three elite warriors broke through the Philistines' forces and drew some water from the cistern in Bethlehem near the gate. They carried it back to David, but he refused to drink it. He poured it out as a drink offering to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, I will not do this. It is equivalent to the blood of the men who risked their lives by going. So he refused to drink it. Such were the exploits of the three elite warriors. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, was head of the three. He killed 300 men with his spear and gained fame among the three. From the three, he was given honor and he became their officer, even though he was not one of the three. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was a brave warrior from Kabziel, who performed great exploits. He struck down the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in his cistern on a snowy day. He also killed an impressive-looking Egyptian. The Egyptian wielded a spear, while Benaiah attacked him with a club. He grabbed the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, who gained fame among the three elite warriors. He received honor from the thirty warriors, though he was not one of the three elite warriors. David put him in charge of his bodyguard. Included with the thirty were the following. Asahel, the brother of Joab. Elhanan, son of Dodo, from Bethlehem. Shammah, the Herodite. Elika, the Herodite. Heliz, the Paltite. Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abi Ezer, the Anothothite, Mabani, the Hushithite, Zalman, the Ohohite, Mehare, the Netophathite, Helid, son of Baana, 
the Netophathite, Ittai, son of Ribai, from Gibeah and Benjamin, Bea, the Pirithonite, Hidai, from the wadis of Gaash, Abialban, the Arbathite, Asmapheth, the Barhumite, Eliaba, the Shealbanite, the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, son of Shammah, the Hararite, Ahiam, son of Sherar, the Hararite, Eliphalet, son of Ahazbai, the Maacathite, Eliam, son of Ahithophel, the Gilanite, Hezrai, the Carmelite, Peari, the Arbite, Igal, son of Nathan from Zobah, Bani, the Gadite, Zelech, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Beerothite, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, and Uriah, the Hittite. Altogether, there were thirty seven. The Lord's anger again raged against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go count Israel and Judah. The king told Joab, the general in command of his army, Go through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and muster the army so I may know the size of the army. Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God make the army a hundred times larger right before the eyes of my lord the king. But why does my master the king want to do this? But the king's edict stood, despite the objections of Joab and the leaders of the army. So Joab and the leaders of the army left the king's presence in order to muster the Israelite army. They crossed the Jordan and camped at Aurora, on the south side of the city, at the Wadi of Gad, near Jazer. Then they went on to Gilead, into the region of Tatum Hadchai, coming to Danjan, and on around to Sidon. Then they went to the fortress of Tyre, and all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites. Then they went on to the Negev of Judah, to Beersheba. They went through all the land, and after nine months and twenty days, came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of warriors to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 sword-wielding warriors, and in Judah, there were 500,000 soldiers. David felt guilty after he had numbered the army. David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now, O Lord, please remove the guilt of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. When David got up the next morning, the Lord had already spoken to Gad the prophet, David's seer. Go, tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am offering you three forms of judgment. Pick one of them, and I will carry it out against you. Gad went to David and told him, Shall seven years of famine come upon your land? Or shall you flee for three months from your enemy with him in hot pursuit? Or shall there be three days of plague in your land? Now decide what I should tell the one who sent me. David said to Gad, I am very upset. I prefer that we be attacked by the Lord, for his mercy is great. I do not want to be attacked by men. So the Lord sent a plague through Israel from the morning until the completion of the appointed time. 70,000 men died from Dan to Beersheba. When the angel extended his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented from his judgment. He told the angel who was killing the people, that's enough, stop now. Now the Lord's angel was near the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. When he saw the angel who was destroying the people, David said to the Lord, Look, it is I who have sinned and done this evil thing. As for these sheep, what have they done? Attack me and my family. So Gad went to David that day and told him, Go up and build an altar for the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. So David went up as Gad instructed him to do, according to the Lord's instructions. When Arana looked out and saw the king and his servants approaching him, he went out and bowed to the king with his face to the ground. Arana said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? David replied, To buy from you the threshing floor, so I can build an altar for the lord, so that the plague may be removed from the people. 
Arana told David, My lord the king may take whatever he wishes and offer it. Look, here are oxen for burnt offering, and threshing sledges, and harnesses for wood. I, the servant of my lord the king, give it all to the king. Arana also told the king, May the Lord your God show you favor. But the king said to Arana, No, I insist on buying it from you. I will not offer to the Lord my God burnt sacrifices that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty pieces of silver. Then David built an altar for the Lord there and offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings. And the Lord accepted prayers for the land and the plague was removed from Israel. God, seriously, this passage took me hours to do. Well, you already know that. You were watching me. Um, all these names. But here's the thing. Even though I, I fuss and tease about having to figure out how to say all these names, um, just like I, I just recently posted on Facebook, I want to to honor all of the people and the places that you intentionally put in the Bible. So I look up any of the names I can't say uh, and get as close as I possibly can to the pronunciation and, and hope I say it right. <laughs> Sometimes I have to record it a few times. I just want to be really respectful to everything that you have done and then, then turned over to us. Um, to read, to help guide our lives, to share with other people. So even though I have this huge list of David's warriors <laughs> that took me forever to figure out all their names, I do know that there's more of it coming when we get into Kings. So <laughs> it's just good prep work, I suppose. But one of the things that's really exciting is everything in the Bible is, is very intentional. It's not like you just put that list of names in there to, to drive me crazy for a whole afternoon. Um, it, it proves the Bible. So as we find pieces of history and names and things written down, they can match it up with the Bible. So we can prove the Bible that way, which glorifies you. Um, also it confirms the story. So if David was a man after your own heart, you would expect other people to gravitate towards that as natural leaders that you put out in this world tend to have people who gravitate naturally to them. Uh, not to to um, pass up their affection and relationship for you, of course, um, but just as a leader, just as you would a pastor in a church. So it's confirming uh, to see this list of, of warriors, uh, not only just their names, but what they have done and do for, for David as allegiance and in respect to him and what he has done uh, for Israel. So it's amazing, once I get done being a brat about the names, it's amazing to read these stories and watch all of the pieces of the confirmation that support what we're reading. I know that your entire word is God-breathed. I know that you breathed all of this into existence. I believe that with everything in my heart. But there are other people who need all of the pieces of the puzzle to fit. And I do know that these are all the different pieces of the puzzle. These are all the different parts of the story. And it just gets really exciting as uh, what you have given us is confirmed over and over and over again. You know, I was um, just grinning, uh, grinning from ear to ear last night. I, I was having a hard time even sleeping. I was just so excited. I'm watching you get a hold of, of somebody I know and you're sending in the troops and you're going to battle for him. And uh, I don't know if you're cutting off his previous life because you're sick and tired of what he's doing. I don't know if you have big plans for him. I suspect based upon his personality that you do. Um, I, it really doesn't matter. I just love watching when you come in and swoop down with the troops, sort of like I've been reading about King David and it's so obvious how much you love this person, um, how you have always been there for them. And I just get, I just get really excited that even though we try and push you away, even though we try and choose other things, especially worldly things, uh, that you just continue to pursue us with a passion that we just can't even comprehend. And so last night I was thinking about that, like how in the world can anybody think that there isn't a God? Um, 
I, I, I get, I don't agree, but I get agnostic. Um, I don't get atheists. Like, really? There's got to be something else out there. Um, but I was thinking about watching this evolve around my friend. Like, how could you miss God in any of this? And it's just, what's amazing is it's not only changing my friend's life. Uh, and that's just such a beautiful blessing to watch. But it's changing uh, the lives of the people around him as well as he starts to experience this. And I just see your glorification over and over and over again. And I get so excited that you have uh, another one of your chosen uh, that has been brought into the family and is about to do some really awesome things uh, with all the gifts that you've given him. So, so yeah, so thank you for, for these long list of names. <laughs> thank you for uh, giving me opportunity to learn uh, more about all these people. Uh, and thank you for just proving over and over again that you are God. You you do not need to do that. If I was God, I'm not sure I would go to all that trouble of doing that. But yet you very gently show us over and over again, not only that you are our God, but you love us. And along with that love comes grace and mercy. Amazing. In your son's name I pray. Amen.